singing that we do would be honor and glory to you and that we would receive a blessing from it it would receive a blessing from the prayers and lord prepare our hearts for the message to come um be with those who couldn't be here today and ask lord that you would um uh, just bless those that um that are taking time to uh put you first in jesus name i pray amen, amen. all right you want to keep leading singing i can if you want i can okay yep. we're gonna have fun with it so thank you please be seated Here's the deal. It's one of those songs where if you don't sing as well uh, sitting down as you did standing up, I'm going to make you stand up again, all right? But, uh, uh, it's, 290, it's 292. It's just like his great love. And watch us because we're going to hold some of these things out. So uh, well, let's, uh, we're going to go with it.
going to do the first verse, then Brother Matt's going to pass the microphone back to me, and he's going to take the young people out to Junior Church on the second verse, okay? So, love lifted me, it's page 228. No, wrong. In my heart there rings a melody, it's page 228. Let's sing. I like that song. I had a song that Jesus gave me. Chapter Isaiah chapter 40 and um, verses 27 through 31. I'll read 27 and 29. You do 28 and 30, and then we'll do 31 out loud together. All right, for the word of God. Verse 27. Why speakest thou, O Jacob, and speakest thou, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, faineth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, out loud together please. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Father, we love you. Uh, we, most of us have been running like crazy. And Lord, uh, we're weary. I think last night, Lord, you know I hit the pillow and I didn't move. I was done. And uh, Lord, there are occasions, there are just times when you tell us to stop and smell the coffee. Mm 
Mm. Stop and get some rest. Mm. And Lord, uh, thus the title of this morning, there is a rest. Yes. A, a need for rest. And Lord, we pray that you can help us to learn from your word today that it might improve the quality of our lives and more importantly, Lord, the quality of our walk with you. Yes. And Lord, we pray you'd help us with that today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So, we're, in a, we're living in a day in which there seems to be for lack of better terms, no rest for the weary. I think the Hodgkin family has been going for a week straight on maybe about two hours sleep per night. Um, most people have to work several jobs uh, just in order to pay their debts and their bills. Uh, there really is something called chronic fatigue syndrome. That's a real something. Okay, and uh, the truth of the matter is everybody at some time or another suffers from it to one degree or another. Mm -hmm. There is, however, one who can always provide us rest, and his name is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Even with the so-called stay-at-home orders that have been in place, it seems as if everyone is on the run. <coughs> I, if you think about it, parents who were used to sending their young people to school and then maybe going to a job or being at home have found that with their job shut down or with their kids at home, they're running harder than they did previously. <laughs> it's just the way it's been. Um, they restarted the National Basketball Association. And they moved all of the players to a closed section and shut down section of Disney World that's residential. Normally it would be held for seasonal workers, but because Disney's been shut down, there are no seasonal workers there. So every player and coach on the NBA is housed in the city that is Disney World. And they're playing in the gymnasiums in, Dis in that city of Disney World. I mean, yes, it's a city. Disney World actually has its own zip code, okay? And there's not only the theme park, but there is housing for all of those who work at the theme park. Normally that housing would be full, it's empty because the park's been shut down. So they moved the entire NBA to Disney World to play in a bubble. Coaches, players, met doctors, the whole nine yard, they're all living in this bubble. Now, they're apart from their families and everything else, and that kind of stress and that kind of all work, no play, because that's all they can do is play basketball, <coughs> yeah, that is, they're not getting any rest. But everybody needs rest. Sooner or later, everybody needs rest. So even with these so-called stay at home and this and that and the other, okay, Everybody's on the run, many more than they would be under ordinary circumstances. Lots of folks haven't felt well, and it has nothing to do with COVID-19. More have had so much fear because of COVID-19, it's wiped them out. It's wiped them out. I know families, they're scared to death. They, they don't want to go out of their own houses. There's no cases of COVID-19 in the town in which they live, yet they are scared to death to go out of their houses. It's stupid, to be honest. I, I understand taking precautions. Texas and Florida are both hotbeds. Thousands yeah, yeah, of cases. Yeah. Thousands. So if I lived in Texas or Florida, I wouldn't be going outside much. No. Either. I get that. We live in Maine. There's zero cases happening for 95% of the state. Where there are cases, they're happening in Portland, nobody's dying That's from right. them, and it's, get, and it's no worse than the common cold. So why are people up here worried when literally zero is happening and they're scared to death? Fear is knocking the snot out of them. 
with working from home and teaching at home and everything and anything available on the internet, people are up and online all hours of the day and night. Thus, we're currently living in a sleep-deprived culture and to take it further, people think that's okay. They, they question the value of rest. Some even cut back on their sleep time to carve out time. They can't go to the gym, but boy, they'll be up half the night and then they'll go out for their morning run. Okay, uh, you know, for what it's worth, you burn about 70 cal calories an hour just by sleeping. Think about it. This means a good night's sleep approximates a five-mile jog. Amen. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. By the way, I did get that from from the Saturday Evening Post. That was a reliable news article that I got that from. Right. Running at full speed all the time can cause all sorts of issues for us. And God knows that. So God says in verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they should walk, shall walk and not faint. Let's pray and we're going to get into this topic. There is a need for rest. Father, we love you. Pray you'd help us to glean today from your word that it may help us. We need your help. Too many weary people. Lord, if we're going to be if we're going to be our best for you, we need to be taking care of ourselves physically and we need to be well rested and we need to be on top of our game. Lord, when we're not, it diminishes from what we can do for you. It diminishes from all of our desires, including our desires for you. So, Lord, we pray you'd help us to understand there is a need for rest. There is a needed rest. And, Lord, we pray you'd help us to get some of the principles of that down today. Lord, bless my words. I want to give exactly what you'd have me to say. In Jesus' name, amen. In other words, God says there's a time to stop, a time to rest, a time to rejuvenate. He puts it another way in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 29, and 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That is the exact opposite of what the world wants. When the world piles it on, you feel weighted down, hard moving, hard getting things together because you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and that's exactly how the world wants you to feel. There is freedom and rest in Jesus Christ. And we need to have that rest. We need to have that freedom if we're going to have the strength to do everything that we're supposed to do. Sometimes we can run so hard, we push so hard, we do so much, we feel beat up and worn down. Now the challenge with that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, where it says our bodies belong to the Lord. They are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if our bodies belong to the Lord, and they are the temple of the Holy Spirit, then we are the stewards of the managers of our body and we are expected by God to take good care of ourselves physically. In other words, there's a need for rest. Before you get into it and say, Pastor, you're meddling. Okay. I can take care of myself. I have to push this hard. Now, the Bible says rest is needed and we're the ones who need it. Now, all that to be said, this is not something new. Uh, it has been going on for a long time, and we just happen to be the current generation and need this kind of rest. So we ought to realize, first of all, that this has been a common problem. This has been a common problem. We're all tired from something at some point. 
we're all weary of something at some point. Okay. Um, fatigue often can takes over even the uh, uh, even the strongest among us. Years ago, I was at a church and they boasted uh, uh, the strongest man in the state of Maine, and he could literally lift a car. He was that strong, and he did it for years. But he reached a point where he had done so much of that over the years and he hadn't taken proper care of himself that his body was fatigued and he gave out. The strongest man in the state of Maine could literally lift a car all by himself. And his body gave out. Fatigue uh, uh, overtakes even the strongest of, uh, among us, we get so tired from something, from, from stuff. Stuff we do. I have to tell you, generally speaking, I push so hard, if you put me in a quiet room and left me to my own, I could probably sleep for 24 hours without breathing hard. <laughs> without thinking about it. I, it's just... Uh, and part of that was, you know, in Bible college, I worked overnights, and I would go to, uh, I, I'd get home from work at 7 o'clock, and have to be in my first class by 7.30. And I would literally uh, stand in the back of the classroom at Bible college with a clipboard and a pad and paper, and I would pace the back of the room to take notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. And the reason for that was because if I sat down at a desk in the classroom, I was done. I was just done. And class would go until 1230. Uh, classes would go until 1230. Occasionally, uh, we'd have to have, the, we, we'd meet as a study group. We had one teacher. This man talked so fast in teaching. Okay. And every Friday he gave, he never gave major tests. But every Friday he gave a 10 question quiz. Uh, you know, you walk into class on Friday, you first, you knew to take out a piece of paper, put your name on it, and he'd give a 10 question quiz on notes for the week. The problem is he talks so fast, nobody, Miss Anna, you all right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Nobody could get a complete set of notes from the guy because he talked that fast. So we would meet uh, a group, and we reached a point where we figured, some of us figured this out, and we'd meet with four or five of us who were in that, in that class after lunch, and we'd go over all the notes. And between four or five of us, we could get a complete note, a complete set of notes to study from. And we, uh, for me, I was getting out of ten questions, I was getting four to five wrong every time, fifty to sixty average, because I didn't have a complete set of notes. But when we worked together and put our notes together, we all went from getting sixties to getting hundreds. At graduation, as I walked across the platform. Uh, the professor, his name was Eli Haru, he shook my hands and he said, Chris, you're the best student to ever sleep through my class. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because there was a need for rest. We all are all tired from something. We get tired physically. We get tired mentally. We get tired emotionally just from the everyday struggles that we have dealing with people. My, my, John, my son John, he's personable enough, but if you stick him in a corner somewhere, he's perfect. he hates interacting with people. It's not that he's not, per, he's not you know, pleasant to talk to, he just hates interacting with people. He just doesn't want, Dad, people say stupid stuff. <laughs> Son, I get it. He says, no, Dad, I could never pastor a church. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> you know, we get tired from dealing with 
stuff. Every time Janet Mills releases, gives a new oh. press release about new guidelines, oh I word. can't get past one sentence before I'm tired of reading it. Oh, yeah. We get tired from stuff. It's an everyday struggle. We get tired physically. We get tired mentally. We get tired emotionally. And, and you think about families out there that have, a, a, especially since their kids have been home from school and everything else, they're wrestling with dysfunctional relationships. Okay. We uh, there was a lady yesterday, and I asked uh, I asked Brother Gary. I said, "Who is that?" He said, uh, "He said that is." I said. That's who that is. Cause I, I had heard the name before, and never met the, never met them. He said, "Yeah, she's on. She's working on her fourth marriage for uh, fourth marriage now, and she is just quirky, is the word he used." Okay, Barb sitting back there. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, she's just quirky, and she's working on her fourth marriage now. Maybe he's not as quirky as the other three she married. <laughs> That's what he said to me. All right, dysfunctional relationships, All right. unrealized dreams. I should be so much more than I am today. Oh, maybe you're right where God wants you to be, y'all. Yeah. And then heartbreaking loss. Heartbreaking loss. I love my sister-in-law dearly, but every year about the time of mama's about the time of mama's passing. She loses it every year. Mm. Michelle's mom's been gone for how many years now? Eight, Eight mm. years. And she still can't get over that heartbreaking loss. Absolutely, you lose a parent, you lose a child, you lose a sibling. I know there was a pastor, and there was a pastor in another town. His wife died cancer, 47 years old. Heartbreaking loss. He never got over it. It cost him his church because he could never get over the loss of his wife. People need rest. People need rest. It's a common problem. You know, we get tired uh, spirit. Listen, we get tired spiritually from trying to live up to our faith. Why? Because we're trying to do it in the flesh. It's impossible to keep going spiritually if we if we don't have the Holy Spirit helping us through it. If we're working in the flesh, mm -hmm. if God's not if we're doing it on our own instead of God's doing it, instead of God doing it through us, mm -hmm. uh, will we still accomplish stuff? Yeah, but boy, we'll get weary in well doing because we're not we're not trusting God's strength. All that to be said, mm -hmm. fatigue can do strange things to us. In, uh, in football, the Super Bowl trophy is named, uh, the, the team that wins the Super Bowl is, uh, is named, uh, the, the trophy is named the Lombardi Trophy. It's named after uh, who, the man who is potentially the best coach ever in football. I say potentially because Bill Belichick, when they, if Bill Belichick dies, they're going to rename it to be the Belichick Trophy. That's a, uh, uh, it's called the Lombardi Trophy after Vince Lombardi, and he was the greatest football coach who ever lived. And he, he, he told his players one time, he said, listen guys, you got to be careful. You go out on the football field and you're tired, you're going to have problems. His statement was this, fatigue makes cowards of us all. Why? Because we're not, we don't have the strength to stand up for what we ought to stand up for, to do what we ought to do. It can affect an entire generation. You think about Israel, you know, okay, so they've been living through uh, uh, tolerating, dealing with the Egyptians as the Egyptians went through the ten plagues and Pharaoh said, just said, beat on them more and more and more and more. Then they leave in the middle of the night. They're backed into a corner. God parts the Red Sea. They go across and they take an 11, a million, a million to a million and a half of them, take an 11 day journey by foot to get to the edge of the promised land. Moses sends over the 12 spies, and the 12 spies came back and say, <laughs> better than we are. We can't go there. 
Uh, it, you know, they were just tired. They were tired. If their, their resolve to go on had been broken. And fatigue will impact our resolve to go on. There's a marker on a rock near the top of Mount Washington marking the spot where a woman climber laid down and died. She was so close to the top, she could have almost hit it with a stone. A hundred steps more, and she would have reached the self-shelter that she needed to survive. But she didn't know this because clouds, storm clouds, had overtaken the peak of the mountain. She was disheartened by the storm. She was beaten in body. She was depressed in spirit. She was at the end of her courage. She could not see a step ahead, so she laid down and died a short 100 steps from her goal. Oh, wow. There's a need for rest, and it's a common problem. That being said, there's a need for rest, and we have a comforting promise. I will give you rest. That's what the Lord said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, if just about anybody else made that promise, okay, we'd find it an empty promise. I work for a guy, he likes to go out to lunch. Says, Come on, Chris, we need to go out, take a little break, have a little rest. He's full of soup. <laughs> There's no rest because all he does is talk about what we're going to do when we get back. <laughs> there is no rest. He doesn't take a little rest. It's not true. So if just anyone says, I will give you rest, a lot of times it's going to be an empty promise. If a politician makes the promise, you know it's an empty promise. Okay. If a doctor, if a physician made that promise, we'd say, yeah, right, doc, you don't know my schedule and take it with a grain of salt. There are just some, there are things that people can't do for us. But when Jesus makes this promise, I will give you rest. You know what we ought to do? Stop and listen. We ought to pay a little bit of attention to that. Okay. His promises are anything but empty. He, is, he, he not only gives us the truth all the time, every time because he is a God who cannot lie his integrity is 100% perfect 100% of the time and he has the power the strength and the ability to deliver on his word all of the time <laughs> okay we can stake we do stake our eternal destinies on the reliability of his promises what do I mean by that well listen not for nothing but we're sinners destined for hell. Our sin condemns us to hell. But Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the price for our sins so that we don't have to. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He became the propitiation, that is the substitute, substitution or substitutive, satisfactory, debt, payment of the debt for our sins, so that we don't know that anymore. When we accept his payment, we accept him as Savior. We believe that he is the Savior of the world who died on the cross for us to pay the price for our sins. We trust in him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have just staked our eternal destinies on his promises. Now, let me ask you this. If we are willing to stake our eternal destinies on the re reliability of his promises, then why are we not willing to stake our day-to-day -day lives on the reliability of his promises? I will give you rest. we got to take this promise just as seriously as we take any other promise of God. Listen, his rest includes a peace of mind. There is a peace that passes all understanding, and we get it only from Jesus Christ. 
His rest includes a place of refuge. He is our shield, our buckler, and we can hide ourselves under his wings. His rest includes uh, renewing our strength. And we find that in our text. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. His rest includes a renewing of our minds. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is a comforting promise. I will give you rest. But we've got to be in Christ, with Christ, for Christ, if we're going to take advantage of that promise. If we're stuck out in the world and we're doing this and that and the other thing and we don't take time to be with Christ and in Christ, we're not going to get the rest He promised us. It comes by being with Him, in Him, abiding with Him, spending time with Him, praying with Him, reading His Word, spending time with the fellowship of His people. That's what it takes to have that comforting promise. I will give you rest, that peace of mind, that peace that passes all understanding, that place of refuge, place of safety, that renewal of our strength, and that renewing of our minds. It's a comforting promise for a common problem, but it has a challenging prescription. That same verse in Matthew says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, I want you to understand how yes some of it. when I went when I was growing up I worked in a theme park called Wild West City and Wild West City had a stagecoach and the stagecoach was pulled by a team of horses and they would take when they got new horses in these horses would have to be trained to work together under a yoke. That is to say they were tied together, they were linked together, they were strapped together, and if this one went this way, and the other one tried to go that way, it wasn't going to work for them. Mm -mm. They were under a yoke. They had to work together in harmony, step by step, side by side, together. Anybody who's ever plowed with a team of oxen would understand the same principle is true. A yoke is that which is put upon you that forces you to pull together with another. And Jesus says, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And my burden is light. So when we take his yoke upon us, Guess who wants to be in partnership with us, to pull together with us, to work with us? He, guess who wants to carry the load with us? We seek rest by escaping, by getting away, throwing our responsibilities under the bus. I'm going to go to Tahiti for a month. What about your job? I don't care about my job. I'm going to go to Tahiti for the month and do nothing but lay on the beach and drink my ties. Okay? It never works out that way. It just doesn't. You cannot relieve yourselves of life. You just can't. And when we get back, what happens? Everything that we've thrown under the bus for the past week, the past month, it's all still there. And we come back and we're twice as stressed out as it was as we were when we left. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He calls us new, to a new task. We're looking for a hammock to relax in. Jesus is calling us to a yoke to work in. He calls us to find rest by voluntarily placing ourselves under a different kind of burden. Okay. And in so doing, he offers us words that teach us the real cause of fatigue and the nature of true rest. Okay. The problem with life is not that we must work 
that we have to serve some master, perform <coughs> some task. Okay? We all serve somebody. It's just a question of who we serve. You work for years, and you're working for somebody. Technically, a physician works for his patients, although today he works for the insurance company and everybody else who forces him to do paperwork. There are doctors today, by the way, in the state of Maine who have absolutely thrown all that under the bus. They take no insurances. It's cash on the barrel. And they say, if you, if you talk to any of them, they will tell you they get five times more time with their patient than they did with their patients than they do than they did when they were uh, in an office with insurance because they had to spend they were only allowed to spend five minutes with a patient because they had to fill out all that paperwork and they had to keep the patients coming through because it became a cash machine not a care machine everybody has to work we all have to perform tasks you think about it okay oh pastor I'm retired really do you mow your lawn <laughs> Yeah. You're a servant to your house. Okay. We know that one real well. We're, you know, everybody has to do something. The problem is really found in the work that we choose to do and whom we choose to serve. So the kind of rest that Jesus offers is not relief from the tasks necessary to sustain us. It is not freedom from the trials of life. Those early disciples who took him up on this promise still had to labor for bread and face all the difficulties that life could throw at. The kind of rest that Jesus offers is a peace of mind. It's a calmness of spirit. It comes from knowing that our lives are being lived within his will. It's the kind of rest that accompanies a life that is rescued from self-made anxieties. I watch, I watch I was in Walmart recently. Mama with a little one. And the little one's just running. I mean, he's staying close enough to Mama, but he's just about running circles around the shopping cart and everything else. Okay. And Mom is starting to lose it. Starting to lose it. And by the way, I'm not talking about a toddler. I'm talking he's too big to sit in the shopping cart. Okay? Oh boy. Mama's starting to lose it with this boy. He's just <coughs> running around. Will you stop? Right in the middle of the store. Will you stop running? It sounds like me. <laughs> okay? <coughs> so much for calmness of spirit. <coughs> by the way, That kind of calmness will impact your children as well. Mm. When mama and dad are that calm, mm. that will influence the child to be calm. <coughs> when mama or dad, when mama and dad loses it, all it does is get the kids more worked up. That's right. mm -hmm. There's a calmness of spirit, and it comes from knowing that our lives are being lived within the will of God. It's the kind of rest that uh, accompanies a life that's rescued from those self-made anxieties. Mm -hmm. I gotta do this. I gotta do this. I gotta do this. <laughs> <laughs> and our, 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 our brains are exploding because we don't know how we're going to get it all done. And sometimes you're not. But it's still going to be there another day. Yeah. If, yo, know, we have... Two ma three, three major projects, I think, left at the house. we got to get siding on the back of the house. We need to redo the porch, and we need to do something with the garage door. Those are probably our three biggie projects. <coughs> we, got the stuff for the si we got the stuff for the siding. Sitting in the backyard. I want it to get done. Ask me if it's done yet, and the answer is no, it's not done yet. Will I get to it? Yeah. Am I going to panic over when I get to it? No. 
I'm not. I can't. If I panicked over when I was going to get to it, my anxiety would be through the roof. Yo, know, even the unavoidable work of meeting basic needs is made less tiring by the reassurance that, you know what, we're yoked up together for Jesus and he'll help us as we go. You understand, Jesus, uh, uh, um, when he was with the disciples, Jesus said, I want you to get into the boat and go to the other side. I'll catch up with you. And the disciples got in the boat they got halfway across the Sea of Galilee, and one of those storms, uh, uh, um, one of those storms came up, and they're going this way, that way, and the other way, and the boat's getting filled with water. They are in a full-fledged panic. Okay, wait, who put them in the boat? <laughs> Jesus put them yeah. in the boat. They're in the middle of the storm. Jesus put them in the boat in the middle of the storm. They're in a full-fledged panic. But when they realized that Jesus was right there with them, be not afraid, it is I, be of good cheer. And they let Jesus get in the boat with them. Jesus turned around and said, peace be still. Jesus didn't, listen, Jesus did not help them avoid the storm. Actually, he sent them into the storm. But the minute they realized Jesus was there, there was a calm. We go about, what? Life! And we forget we have an ever-present Savior who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I am with thee always, even until the end of the world. And we don't turn around and look at him and say, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how we can get through this. It's too much on my plate. What am I going to do? And let him calm us. Instead, we say, ah, ah, I can't do this. And the truth is, you're right, you can't. You can't. But he said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me help you. Let me be with you. Let me give you peace. Let me calm your spirit. We go so fast, try to do so much, often with so little that we don't have the resources to do it, that we lose it. But there's a needed rest. And the only way we find that rest is in Jesus Christ. People wear all kinds of yokes. Some are slaves to ambition. Others are sold out to greed. Some lust after materialism. Some are addicted to alcohol. Others are caught up and bound in the envelope of pride and all of the evils that come with that. You know what those things do? They exhaust us. And that's what they do. By placing ourselves under the yoke of a gentle, humble, loving Savior, our lives become liberated from the exhaustion of all that stuff and we're set free to work purposefully unto true satisfaction and fulfillment. One author, a lady named Julia Ward Howe, in one of her books said she was tired all the way down to the future. In other words, she could see no end to her own weariness. The Italian poet, poet Dante, exiled from Florence, wandered all over Europe. One night he knocked at the door of a Franciscan monastery, and a monk opened the door and said, what do you want? Dante, still read in English literature classes unto this day, by the way, uttered one word, 
rest. People look at rest differently. I enjoy my sleep. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. If I get to sleep until about 8 a.m., 8.15, I feel well rested. Okay. I get up and just don't set the alarm. I'll get up when I get up. And I feel well rested. My wife, on the other hand, 4 a.m. looks good to her, <laughs> okay? And she gets up early, and listen, she'll go through the house like a banshee between the hours of 4 a.m. and 7 a.m., cleaning like a whirlwind. Dishes get done, laundry gets done, sweeping gets done, vacuuming gets done, counters get wiped off, the, 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 all before 7 a.m. Wow. And wait, wait, wait. All that to say, when she's done, she feels rested, and accomplished it. Two different, yeah. We both need our rest. And we're both right. But our rest takes different forms. Yeah. Uh, there's a need for rest. It's a common problem, but it has a comforting promise from the Lord I will give you rest. The challenging promise is getting yoked up with Jesus right. to live in that rest. When we serve the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit, we, can, we, we become empowered by him. We have great victories and we still feel rested. In contrast, when we try and do everything without God, it kicks the fire out of us. We're worn out. And wearing ourselves thin, listen, that's a common problem. It's all too common, even among God's people. We're prone to it. Thankfully, we have a comforting promise from the Lord. He is willing to give us rest. He is able to give us rest. The problem is, we don't realize he's in the boat with us. Right, right. Looking to give us rest. We forego the presence of the Lord to live in the presence of the things that stress us out, cause our anxiety, and wear us down. When if we would just say, Lord, I need rest, and yoke together with him, we would find that peace that passes all understanding, that refuge, that calm. We've got a world out there to face that wants to beat us down and wants to wear us out. We're never going to get through it on our own. We desperately need the Lord. We need him with us. We need his presence. We need his rest. We need his purpose. And we face life without him. So the question is this. Won't you come to the Lord today and ask him for his yoke, to partner up with him, to get the peace, to get the rest. It doesn't excuse us from life. It gives us rest through life and in spite of life. We need that. Let's stand, heads back, eyes closed. Miss Caroline's going to play. The altar is open. Father, we love you. Pray you help us today. There's so much, we're so tired, so weary of just living life. Will you help us to come to you today? Ask for that rest. Ask for your yoke. That we might, we might in our lives, mount up with wings as eagles, run, not be weary, walk and not faint, faint, trusting you and your yoke and your rest to renew our strength. We need that. Pray that you'd help us with it. Pray that we come today looking for it. In Jesus' name, amen. As the music plays, the altar is open.
Oh, is that? Oh, no. Wait. All right, if you are watching us on our live stream, you can go to www.newlifeinj.org forward slash giving. And we do have families that are doing that, and we're thankful for the online support. Newlifeinj.org forward slash giving. We appreciate all of the online participation. We're thankful for it. And uh, if you're here today, let's, uh, let's continue our worship of the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. Uh, Brother Paul, would you uh, lift up your voice in prayer? All right, let's pray. just thank you for the service and all that we can rest in you, dear Lord. We just thank you this time and this <clears throat> moment that we can give back to you what you have blessed us with, dear Lord. I just ask you to ask you to use the money, use this time to glorify you and spread your word, dear Lord. Lord, I just ask you to <clears throat> be with each one of us as we give joyfully to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> tracks to hand out regarding our church and our ministry and he will be inviting people here for church both Wednesday night for Bible study that week and uh, um, Thursday and, and Sunday for church and brother brother Netterville will be preaching on Sunday next Sunday that's next Sunday yeah that's next Sunday brother Netterville will be preaching that Sunday um, brother Paul Brother Paul, I need you to teach Sunday school next Sunday. You up for that? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Did you see that? Brother Paul, I need you to teach Sunday school on Sunday. You up for that? I took it as a yes. It's only my you, sure. Sunday, August 23rd, uh, we are going to get your games ready. Carnival is here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set the t set the tent up on Saturday. Um, we set it up for the, we listen. We bought this tent. We took it out of the box yesterday for the first time for Liz's wedding, Carl and Liz's wedding, and it took eight of us an hour and a half to set it up. Okay, we're setting it up on Saturday now. The good news is, in the process of setting it up, we learned what goes where, and we numbered all the parts. So we can put it together by number. It should go a lot faster the second time than it did the first time. But I'm going to need a crew on Saturday morning to help set up the tent, and that would be on the 22nd. All right? Uh, we're going to set up the tent on Saturday, and then um, the carnival will be here on Sunday. Um, I'll have flyers ready to hand out uh, before Brother Netterville goes and starts doing the Bible thing, uh, handing out Bibles. We're going to invite people to the carnival. We're going to post it on, on our Facebook page. 
Uh, by the way, share it and share it and share it some more when you see it on the church Facebook page. Yes? May I make a suggestion that, you know, those of us that are having games, I know in the years past we've had them out and it, it gets really hot, but if you have a 10 by 10 tent to put your games under, it would probably yes. save a if lot. Yes, if you have your own 10 by 10 tent and you want to set up a tent in which to put your game under the tent, that would help. Now, Oh, well, we'll get to this, but be cognizant of social distancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is to say, if you get a bunch of kids gathered in one place, just say, hey, could you guys spread out a little bit? Okay, we want to, we want to make sure that we are being cognizant of proper social etiquette for the gathering of the day. All right, we're not going to draw lines on the ground. We're not doing that. Oh, excuse me, you get six feet back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. Okay. Hey, guys, spread out a little bit, will you? Okay, that's all we need to do. But let's be somewhat cognizant of social distancing in this. Um, Brett, you can start bringing your stuff or your games in anytime. We're going to end services at what will be done by noon. Uh, if you want to set up your game that morning or if you want to wait, we're going to, we're going to need to park all the cars down this end of the parking lot so that we have that end of the parking lot and the grass for the games and the tent and everything else. Um, so yeah, just bring them in and, and we'll get them set up as quick as we can. We want to set, we want to start 1 o'clock on that Sunday afternoon. Every 15 minutes, there's going to be a gospel presentation. We're going to get the adults together. We're going to draw a gift card, a prize for a gift card for the adults. Everybody has to register so they can win a prize. Registration gives us names and addresses to follow up on. Okay? So, um, we're going to be doing that August 23rd, Carnival. Listen, I think we're going to be loaded because nobody else is doing anything. Okay? I think we're going to be packed. Nobody else is doing anything. So, um, all right. Now, help us make gift bags for our local police departments. We have the Bibles. They will get personalized this week. I have all of the names of all of the officers of the J and the Livermore Falls Police Department and the dispatcher at the J District. J Police Department. Her name is Donna, I think. But uh, um, Chief Caton, okay, um, and and Officer Batchelder and Chief uh, uh, er, Chief Ernie down in Livermore and, and the others. Yes. Uh, some people have been uh, kind of like giving uh, towards this. Find a, a fund for the, this to help out, and I've been kind of setting it aside. So okay, um, take the fund, uh, however much it is. We need 13 Walmart gift cards. However much that is, we need 13. So take so, people who've given money, go buy gift cards. And if somebody else wants to give more money, uh, if somebody else wants to give more money, we'll buy Hattiford gift cards. <laughs> Okay, and listen, if we, we'll, if you if you can bring in beef jerky, blue powery, gum, we're, I'm supplying the Dunkin' Dunkin' Donuts is giving us Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. Okay, that's a donation to us. Um, so we're, uh, we're they'll get gift cards for Dunkin', Panford, Walmart. Um, be, I want to give them just snacks, goodies, chips. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna get to BJ's and I'm gonna buy the big big box like that's got like 30 different kinds of individual snack bags we'll put them in there okay just stuff that we're going to give in the personalized bible uh, and, and again we need to fill 13 bags okay so and we are going to present them i'll tell you hold on let me get my handy dandy calendar um I want to present those gift bags to the police department on Friday, August 28th. Friday, August 28th. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I have the Gatorade already. Okay, perfect. 
Um, yeah, Blue Gatorade. Becky has that. That's great. Thank you, Miss Becky. But we're we're gonna we're gonna end. So we're gonna do that Friday afternoon, August twenty eighth. And anybody wants to come with me and participate from our church, love to have you come to that. Just love to have you come with me. So, um, all right. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so because we're gonna do it on the 29th, we need everything that we're gonna have here at the church by Wednesday, August twenty sixth. So please, please, please. Start planning now, help now. We want to, you know, the police departments are under such fire all across the country. I want them to know, I want our local PD to know they're prayed for and they're cared about. All right, that being said, the following Sunday, yes, ma'am. Can you um, get us their names so we can pray for them? Yes, I have them, I will print them off. I have them someplace, but I will print them off. Um, all right, uh, all right, there we go. Um, it's a bird. It's a bird. See the bird? Here's the bird. We're young and like There you go. Um, Sunday, September 6th. Um, we will have our morning service. That is Labor Day weekend. We will have our morning service here as usual. And then we will pack up and meet out at Canton Lake um, at 1 o'clock um, at the D'Ambrosio Beach House. <laughs> it's not really a beach house. Um, we'll meet at the D'Ambrosio's house at 1 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. We'll have a, we're going to have a barbecue at the church. Ladies, please, we need desserts, and we need green salads, and macaroni salads, and potato salads, and this it? salad, September and that, and, and the other well, salad. So please, please, please bring the salads, and we'll do something with chicken and hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff like that. And so come to that. We will have the morning message. I'll be preaching from the dock. We have a couple who need to be baptized. We have, we have some that need to be baptized. So we're uh, we're gonna we'll be baptizing that day. Yes, ma'am. No, you son. They're asking him to stop. <laughs> we have some that need to be baptized that day, so we'll be doing baptisms and then we'll preach from the dock and we should be done I don't know, three o'clock ish in the afternoon and then clean up help listen, whoever can stay and help Marilyn and Tony clean up afterwards, that's appreciated. So, all right. Um, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. All right. Any questions on the announcements? Other than the fact that everybody liked my little birdie. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife's playing That's the only really thing yeah. CJ so. likes it. Right. CJ yeah, really likes the little birdie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stand. Away, little it is 12.01. Uh, we will endeavor to start the afternoon the service. Uh, I don't often... I don't often yeah. self-advertise. Yeah. I don't often self-advertise, but the, the the one the afternoon service has to the 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 title is it's time to take a stand. Amen. All right, and and it's really something that we need to get hold of in our lives. So please, I encourage you to stay for the one o'clock service. Go. I think we've got some pulled pork out there and some other stuff. There's food here. Yes, if you want to go grab something, go grab something. Stay for the 1 o'clock service, please. Uh, um, it's just going to be, we're going to have a good time. I'm excited about it, and we're counting on some blessings. Lord, we love you. We're thankful for your grace. Pray that you can help us. Pray that you bless the food and the fellowship that we're going to have right now. And Lord, we pray that you'd uh, just give us good service this afternoon. Lord, please, please, please help us today to understand that we need you with us to have the rest you want us to have. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.